Mitsubishi finally has a new EV. It's not quite what you might have thought, but here is how I think this will actually become Mitsubishi's global electric vehicle. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to have you here. Welcome to the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Right now, I do really think it's a fantastic time to invest in electric vehicle stocks, especially Chinese ones where the market has just for some unknown reason gone down quite a, quite a bit. It's bounced back up a bit, but I still think companies like Neo, Xpeng, BYD, and NIU are very well priced. So consider having a look at those companies. And if you want to invest in them, you can always use the Stake app. I'll put a link to the code that I have that you can use to get a new free stock if you create an account with Stake. By the way, that's the app that I use for all my trading, particularly in US electric and Chinese electric vehicle stocks. The Mitsubishi Airtrack, I don't know if you remember the Airtrack, there was an original internal combustion engine powered, you know, turbo, I think it was, Airtrack, which actually had the engine from the Mitsubishi Evo. And I had a look at buying one about a decade ago. They're actually kind of cool. But anyway, we now have a modern version, Airtrack EV, and it's launched on the Chinese market. But considering the fact that Mitsubishi has no hope of actually manufacturing EVs at scale globally, this is what I think will happen. Mitsubishi will sell these in China, they'll ramp up production and start to actually use these in other countries globally. It's the only possible option they have. I don't see how there's any other way that Mitsubishi could actually stay alive over the next few years. That's their only choice. Now, for those of you living in Australia, you probably think, oh, Mitsubishi is a pretty big brand. Actually, they're not. They're a very small brand. They're globally a, a pretty insignificant, irrelevant brand, in fact. So let's hope that this electric vehicle does well for them in China. But remember, it's not actually made by Mitsubishi. It's made by their Chinese partner called GAC. GAC also have the Aeon brand, one of the most popular electric vehicle brands in China. By the way, Aeon make an electric car which has about a thousand kilometers of range and it uses a semi-solid state battery with sponge technology, which is absolutely next level. It's amazing. They've demonstrated actually charging at 450 kilowatt hours, fastest charging of any electric vehicle on the face of the planet. Seriously impressive technology. And that vehicle, by the way, with that range is only 60,000 US dollars. Bargain, if, I, if you ask me. Now, the new Mitsubishi Airtrack has been launched on the Chinese car market, featuring a, yeah, a similar design to all their other cars. I don't know why, but that's what they do. They kind of copy themselves on all the different faces of their different vehicles. Here in Australia, people love the Mitsubishi pickup truck or the Mitsubishi U, which looks actually, the face of it is almost the same as this car. Like I said, the Mitsubishi Airtrek is manufactured in China by GAC in their Mitsubishi joint venture. GAC and Mitsubishi own 50% each of the company in this JV. And the Airtrek therefore shares its platform, powertrain and chassis with the Aeon V electric crossover. Aeon is an electric vehicle brand, like I just said before, owned by GAC, which is actually not a bad thing. I mean, they make pretty good EVs, so I don't see how this is a negative. In fact, I see this as a positive. Now, in spite of that, Mitsubishi have obviously given the Airtrack its own distinctive looks on the inside and the outside. Now, I think the outside looks all right, not too bad. The inside, on the other hand, it's not, uh, not quite up to scratch with a lot of its competition in China, put it that way. Now, in terms of the exterior styling, it's not really my kettle of fish. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And this may look like a four-wheel drive or an all-wheel drive vehicle, but it's not. It's actually a front-wheel drive car, but it does have a decent amount of power. That front motor has 224 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque. And it comes with two different battery pack options. Now, this is a bit confusing because... The cheaper model has a bigger pack. First time I've ever seen this. The base vehicle called the Pioneer has a lithium iron phosphate battery pack with a capacity of 72 kilowatt hours and a range of 500 kilometers. That's on the CLTC. WLTP is probably closer to 400. Curb weight is 2,040 kilos and fast charging takes around about 50 minutes to top up 80% of the battery. Top speed is 175 kilometers an hour. Now in the more expensive version, which has a slightly longer range, it comes with a slightly smaller pack at 70 kilowatt hours using lithium ternary batteries. I don't know what chemistry it is, they haven't said, either NCA or NCM most likely. 
that particular variant has a range of 520 kilometers. So only 20 kilometers more, probably a real world range of 420 kilometers. So you'd have to be an absolute moron to buy that version because LFP batteries, you can charge for 100% discharge to zero and doesn't matter. You can do it anytime you want. Paying more for 20 kilometers more of range, probably quite a bit more when the batteries are going to degrade much faster and you're going to get probably one third the number of cycles out of them would just be absolutely mental. But the great thing is at least they're giving you that option of paying less money for the better battery pack. Less money for the better battery pack. Yeah, anyway. Curb weight of that lithium ternary version though is a bit lighter. It's 100 kilos lighter at 1900 kilos. But interestingly, it actually charges a little bit more slowly to get to 80%. Mitsubishi hasn't disclosed any real other significant details yet, but we do know the price, which is $31,000 for the lithium ion phosphate version, which I think is pretty good. It's not amazing, but pretty good, $31,000. US Now, the other variant with the lithium ternary batteries and the 20 kilometers of extra range costs $36,000. US So you'd be paying an extra $5,000 US for what would be an inferior vehicle. It's baffling to me. I'm going to guess that 9 out of 10 buyers will choose the lithium iron phosphate variant. Size, it's 4,360 millimeters long, 1,920 millimeters wide, and 1,728 millimeters high, and it has a 2,830 millimeter wheelbase. Now, for me, just looking at this image here of the interior, I, I don't know, it just, it doesn't quite have the same appeal that a lot of its competitors do in China. So. I think they may struggle to sell them at this price, to be honest. Now that instrument panel for the driver there is 12.3 inches and the large screen in the middle is also 12.3 inches as well. However, it does look a little bit out of date because now a lot of Chinese manufacturers are starting to use twin screens to give you much more screen real estate. Screen real estate has become a big thing in China. One good thing though, is that the infotainment system does support Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and they do car life, by the way, which is quite popular in China. Best thing about this car, right? It's not an ICE vehicle turned into an electric car. It's not an internal combustion engine vehicle turned into an electric car. It's a pure electric vehicle made from the ground up. It means it doesn't have a transmission tunnel like some of the Mercedes vehicles. What were they thinking? I mean, seriously, BMW and Mercedes, how can they offer these premium electric cars that still have a transmission tunnel? It's crazy. It's lunacy. Anyway, getting back to the point here, being built from the ground up as a proper EV is definitely a significant advantage. For example, BMW's 3 Series electric vehicle, which is basically a 3 Series internal combustion engine vehicle that they've converted into a battery powered vehicle, is quite a bit heavier than this, which is, you know, it's ridiculous. My summary for this car, it looks decent, not too bad on the outside, inoffensive, inside, uh, probably a bit behind its competition. Lithium ion phosphate battery, nice battery size pack, 70 kilowatt hour pack, that's a good size. Price, it's a little bit expensive in comparison to the competition. Mitsubishi will definitely struggle to sell. It's not really a huge brand in China. But if they were able to sell these outside of China at that price, they would sell hundreds of thousands. I wish you all the best of luck, Mitsubishi. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Would you buy one of these for 31,000 US dollars? I think I'd have to consider it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.